Hey everybody and welcome to Let's Look at Road to Brawlhalla. I know this might be a little confusing. We've played Brawlhalla, you know, the Super Smash Brothers character and action fighting game that we play on the NLSS sometimes. In that game is a mode called Brawl Ball. So there is Brawl Ball in Brawlhalla. This is not that. This is Road to Brawlhalla, published by Tiny Build Games, developed by Torched Hill. I believe this is the first game, uh, at least that I could find on Steam and on their website that I'm familiar with. But um, Bear's been playing this. I've been seeing a little bit of it on Twitch, so I figured we'd check it out ourselves. It is um, a puzzle. I don't want to call it a platformer because you're not really doing much jumping, but at the same time, it has kind of that same gameplay loop as a as a platform game. Get to the end of the level. Um, action puzzler might be the way that I would describe it. Very similar to a game like Marble Madness, um, and you'll you'll pick up the mechanics very simply as we move on here. This is uh, available on Steam. 15 bucks, 1349 American for its opening week sale, and I did get a copy of this uh, for free from Tiny Build. So we're going to check it out. I've uh, played about 50% of the campaign, and that represents like maybe an hour of gameplay. Maybe an hour and a half. But at the same time, um, that, that's going to be like one of the principal uh, criticisms that I bring up with the game for sure, is that uh, it is quite short. Now, there is workshop support, but the workshop support is not yet available. And as you can see, if I press the A button, I can agree that that sucks. And I do think that kind of sucks, but um, hopefully it's coming uh, reasonably soon in the future as well. But anyway, we're going to continue the campaign here, and we're going to start out on just an early level so I can explain for you uh, what the heck is going on here. And you may notice some similarities between this and other games. In particular, I think there was a game called, like, World's Most Impossible Game or something that was, um, you know, relatively big maybe, like, six or seven years ago. It's kind of similar to that, but with a, a nice coat of paint on it. Uh, it's developed in, in Unreal Engine, and um, it has kind of like that Unreal Engine, you know, shininess, chrominess, if you will. It also, I guess, kind of feels uh, at least superficially similar to another Unreal Engine 4 ball rolling game that we played uh, ages ago. Oh, what in the world was that called? It's developed by Joe Wintergreen in, 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 Inside? Something like that. Anyway, that was more of a 3D puzzler. This one uh, really is a, a very mechanically simple ball rolling game um, that much like World's Most Impossible Game or, you know, You Cannot Beat This Game, I can't remember exactly what it was called, uh, has kind of like a, a contentious relationship with the player in the sense that it has like these tooltips that show up on the game uh, and, you know, things get difficult and then the game mocks you for not being, you know, amazing at defeating them. One mechanic that's important to show off here is um, this the, the interface, basically, in the... Uh, bottom third of the screen, or, you know, bottom tenth of the screen. The green circle indicates that uh, that's our HP, so it isn't like if we make one mistake, we're dead, although some, some obstacles will kill us instantly. Um, you know, if I just stand on this red, uh, you know, I'll call it creep for lack of a better word. If I stand on the red creep, my HP will drop, but unless I'm boosting, I won't die instantly. So let's get our HP back to full, and I'll show you that. Boost is with the right trigger here. I am using controller. If you're boosting, touching any obstacle will kill you instantly. At least any obstacle that I've seen so far. Now, the other hook of the game is that it is a, a little bit uh, of a rhythm game. And I don't mean that to sound like it's a backhanded compliment, but I don't think it's a game where rhythm is ne necessarily the chief focus, but definitely it's going to be a lot easier for you if you play and actually pay attention to the music because um, the obstacles do move uh, in tune or in, in rhythm with the music. So... Being able to know, you know, on the on the beat one of a 4-4 uh, measure, you know, this 2x2 two two block of creep is going to spawn. It said it was a dead end down here. I bet it says I told you so at the end. The game's got that kind of sense of humor. Sorry, dead end. Literally, press Y to respawn. I could have told you that. Anyway, um, just give it a second here. Let's get over here. I don't know if you get um, extra bonuses on levels for beating them without getting hit, but you do definitely get... Um, uh, a, a different reward on the level. Basically, you know how a lot of games use like a one to three star kind of mechanic for how well you did? Uh, the same is true for Road to Valhalla. If you collect all of the, um, you know, white or uh, yellow particles here, you will get uh, more stars, and if you complete it with fewer respawns, you'll get more stars, and your goal is to get 10 stars on every single lever, level, or 10 pips, or whatever they're gonna call it. So you can see we collected all the orbs, we used only two respawns, so that allowed us to get 8 out of 8 tokens here. So that's a very simple kind of like rundown of what happens in the game, but let's move on to a, a slightly more difficult level, because one of the hallmarks of the game is definitely the difficulty. So, 
It's, uh, let's just start on 2-1 here. I, I could use less response. The Dimension Deception. New world, new trials. It is key that you break down your barriers. The game does actually a pretty good job of, of constantly introducing uh, new mechanics. The blue things will just kill us instantly, by the way. But they kind of serve as locks. The game takes pleasure in tricking you, you know? It, it, it's like, hey, the blue floor looks like it allows you to travel to alternate dimensions. Then you go into it and it, uh, it hurts you. And it says, hey, maybe we can cross these barriers with enough speed. I'm going to spoil it for you without showing you. Uh, you can't. You need to pick up the, uh, you need to pick up the, uh, blue squares here and then use them as keys to get through them. And you can see down in the, uh, interface down there, uh, it shows you that we have two blue keys right now. So, we can unlock them like that. And then we lose them forever, but that's okay. These, uh, like, kind of sunbursts here serve as, uh, teleporters. Two keys for four barriers, huh? There is also some light puzzling. Like, for example, we hit this switch. I think we just do this and then we get our other two keys back. So there are, like, some semi-permanent aspects as well. The puzzling is really light. Like, most of it is, um... Most of it is execution. Like, how do I beat this level? I've got to be faster. How do I beat this level? You know, I've got to do it in this order. It's not really like, you know, the witness style, like, this shit is impossible. It really is focused more on kind of, like, performative. Is that even a word? I should have probably picked up a blue thing there, huh? Um, it's focused more on performance, is, is what I mean to say. So this time, you've got to learn the mechanic that uh, checkpoints actually take away your key, or your gate here, your, your key to the gate. And that's why we have this area over here. And you gotta be careful, because you do have a little bit of, like, a homing, like, magnetism to you that sucks in the checkpoints. So we just want to stay close to this wall. Um, so I'm, I'm, basically I've spent a lot of time here giving you, like, a really basic rundown uh, of how the game works. Let's talk about how I actually feel about it. I'm actually a big fan of games like this, and I, I hope this doesn't come across as offensive. But I mean games with, like, really simple mechanics here, and, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not afraid to go a little bit more, uh, complicated, play a game like, you know, a RimWorld or a Crusader Kings 2 or something like that, you know, both games that I've been very into at previous points of my, my life, but at the same time, I also do appreciate a game that's, that's really easy to get into. Oh, that reset these ones. Okay, so how the heck are we gonna get through this? Guess we hit this and grab this. I mean, I've done this once before, but I, I remember when I did it, I was like, I don't understand how I did it. Maybe we want to... No, we probably don't want to teleport yet. Let's go back and get, uh... I wonder if we can just... No, there's no way we can magnetize those. Hold up. I need to pick up some more blue stuff. I guess... We... Oh, I didn't mean to get the checkpoint. I guess we have no choice but to get the checkpoint. Anyway, okay. Grab this. You know what? Forget these over here. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I think I've got this, the keys to the kingdom. Alright, give me this. I need two blue things. And then, we can come down this way. I just want to make sure that we have, like, a way out after we come and get these. And we do have a way out, but I'm not sure if I know how to get to the other ones down there. We gotta bring, like, another blue square somehow. Anyway, let's just leave this at this. Um, so I do, uh, I do appreciate games like this that are really easy to kind of, like, pick up and play. And it's kind of similar to, like, that Super Meat Boy style, where, like, as soon as you put the controller in your hand, you're like, I know what to do, the difficulty is in making it happen. And I actually have had a reasonably good time playing uh, Road to Valhalla so far. It's, you know, it's shiny, it looks nice, it sounds nice, and the, the sound is actually integrated well into the, the puzzles of the game, and it, it provides an asset beyond just like, hey, this soundtrack is nice. Uh, it, it's weird for me to bring up this criticism, because I'm normally the guy who's, like, not really that concerned about the price point of a game, and I think if you get a couple hours of enjoyment out of something, you know, 10 to 15 bucks is a reasonable price. But I will say that the most glaring thing about Road to Valhalla is that this is a... I mean, I did miss out on something here. There's some replayability, don't get me wrong, but it's a little bit of a major ask at 15 bucks for, for an experience that is, like, demonstrably um, this simple, if that makes sense. And you can get into the whole discussion that I have very little patience for about, you know, well, would you get the same amount of enjoyment out of this as you would out of, like, a movie ticket, a movie's roughly two hours long, and then you gotta buy the popcorn if you want, etc., etc. But, uh, compared to, like, a lot of its contemporaries, I think this is a relatively expensive game, given the actual, um, the actual time involved. Like, when I completed the tutorial and it was, like, 5% done with the single-player levels in the game, I'm like, man, that seems like a little... Uh, a little outrageous. 
Outrageous might be a little bit of a strong word, but a, a little um, surprising, let's put it that way. Audacious is a better word maybe than uh, than that. That that being said, there are, uh, you know, new puzzle mechanics. Oh, I'm an idiot. New puzzle mechanics introduced uh, all the time. And it might have the added effect, this, in, in case you're curious, um, this, basically we just have to copy the, uh, the paths from the left side over here onto the right side. Um, they, they do have, like, no levels that are filler, if that makes sense. Like, I'm also wary of the, we gotta go up five, three, four, five, left, two, one, two, up, 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 and then over. Uh, I'm wary of the criticism, you know, just, like, I'm wary of the idea that a game being too short is necessarily a negative, because I'd much rather have a game that has, like, respect for your time, and doesn't just, you know, bloat the game up with filler levels that are not actually that interesting. Uh, and it does do a pretty good job of making sure that, you know, every single level teaches you something meaningful, and uh, I do appreciate that, but at the same time, I think that is the thing that if you, if you end up looking at this game for yourself, you're gonna be like, that's a bit of a tall ask. And makes it a, a bit easier to recommend if it shows up in a sale or something like that. That being said, it also, um, it depends on your preference uh, for games of this ilk, if that makes sense. If you're the kind of person who only wants to play games um, where you can get 60 hours out of them, this is definitely not a game for you. Oh, I'm an idiot. Uh, this is definitely not a game for you. Like, even with workshop support... How are we gonna do this? All right, we need to memorize that snake from back up there. I'm just gonna do trial and error here, because I'm lazy. Um, I think you go, like, okay, you go four across, then, like, three down. And as much as I uh, appreciate the puzzles, and I don't think the game is, like, not worth your time, which is the kiss of death, I do wonder if, if maybe, you know, I, I have maybe a, a little bit of a bias towards preferring uh, games like this, if maybe the average player is gonna be a little bit less enthused. Oh, it is up. Okay. okay. And I think we go three, and then four. Oh, I feel like a genius. And then three, and then left. Oh, I'm the world's smartest man. You can tell I've done this before. See, you can't really cheat, because as soon as... I think the way it's set up is basically, as soon as you um, spawn it, that's when, like, your inertia hits the point where you can't uh, pull it back. Yeah, okay. There we go. So I think you go one more down. Nope! Okay, okay, okay. Remember, this is kind of like part of the central gameplay loop. It is, uh, like, really focused on trial and error. I will say, for a game that's that's relatively short, I mean, you can look at, like, Super Meat Boy, and I think this game has more than a superficial similarity to Super Meat Boy. Um, this, uh, th it's not that tough to succeed. Maybe we just go left here? Oh, fantastic. Um, like, beating the levels has not really been that difficult. Even though it says this section is unbeatable. I mean, we can try to beat it. Let's, let's do it. Uh, not, not going super well so far, but we can actually just go straight up here and get through it. Um, this might prevent us from getting 100%, though. Um, it, it's not that hard to complete. It's hard to get, like, all the optional stuff. And uh, it's not that it's easy. But it, it doesn't have quite that same level of difficulty uh, as as a game that also is, you know, a contemporary of it, I suppose, is what I'm trying to say here. I'm going to try to get as many of these as I can. So overall, you're, you're probably gathering, like, my opinions on Road to Valhalla are relatively mixed. In the end, by the way, in case you're wondering how I'm figuring out what to do here, they just, the, the lasers illuminate the hidden paths. Or at least they, they indicate where the hidden paths are. Um, but you don't want to take the safe spot over there. You want to go like this. Okay. We'll just go all the way around this time. Um, yeah, so my, my opinions on Road to Valhalla are, are mixed, but at least, like, mildly positive. Like, I have had a decent time playing it. There's sometimes, you know, you play a game... Oh, that was so bad. There's sometimes you play a game for a Let's Look At, and after an hour, you're like, I'm done with this, I never want to touch it again. I, like, I get what it's going for, but it's really not a game for me. This isn't really one of those experiences. Like, it was relatively effortless to play an hour of it, which I'll, I'll be the first to say is not the most endearing criticism for a game. It was relatively effortless to play an hour of this uh, game for enjoyment. But that's more than I can say for a lot of games, actually, and uh, I do find it reasonably fun. Aesthetically nice from an audiovisual standpoint. It's got some... Uh, 
It's got some good stuff going for it, but at the same time, uh, let's try to improve maybe our, our standing on level 2-5 or something here. Because um, I, I do like the mechanics that they show off here. This time, we're going to have a, a large ball called a war ball drop. And at first, we're going to have to use this to, or, or we're going to have to just simply avoid this. But in the future, we're actually going to have to use this to help us solve some puzzles on this level, which I think is indicative of pretty good level design. Um, and, and this is one of my favorite levels that I've, I've seen in the game so far. But anyway, uh, in the end, I, I think my opinions on it end up being... Oh, I thought we could make it there. I think my opinion on it ends up being, you know, relatively mixed, but leaning towards the positive. I think if this was a, a little bit cheaper, uh, it, it becomes a lot easier to recommend. And normally, I, I kind of shy away from that criticism. You know, I know I know people had that criticism for games like Inside. Inside was about two hours long for 15 bucks. What's the difference? Well, Inside, I think, is... I Look, if you're going to analyze this from the standpoint of like a 10th grade English debate class there's gonna be a lot of holes in this argument and I'll just tell you that right up I found inside more memorable if that makes sense and I also think inside is almost like a little bit of an artistic achievement it succeeds on the on the basis of its notice we, we use the uh, war ball there to hit the switch kind of a nice, neat way to solve that puzzle but um, inside wait I did this in reverse I touched it by accident. Uh, Inside, I, I think, succeeds on its on its tone and its atmosphere, and, and is an experience that has kind of uh, stuck with me. This is a game that you know it, it feels a little bit more like your summer popcorn movie. You know, like once you uh, once you're done with it, you're done with it, and you're not going to be like going on the subreddit like, oh, what are the you know metaphysical implications of this or something like that. And you know that that's a matter of personal preference, without a doubt. But uh, if, if we're going for, you know, $15 for two or three hour experiences, I'm definitely more in the camp that, that something like Inside is more interesting to me. But you may disagree with that, and this game does have uh, at least the, the promise of uh, workshop support in the future. Alright, so this is where things get a little little touchy and a little tricky here. Notice we were using the uh, war ball to, to stop the lasers there. So we're going to grab these three. And uh, I've, I've already messed this up, so I'm actually just going to hold Y and restart here. So what we do here is actually neat, and maybe you can figure it out for yourself, but, you know, we have this big old obstacle, but we need to get through this hellish gauntlet down here at the bottom, so the way that we're going to do that is just, you know, put the war ball there, and then that's going to block balls for, like, a long time. So I think if we go up here real quick, we might be able to swing this. Oh, I don't think I should have used both blocks there. Because now there's no way for me to get out. Is there a checkpoint? There's no checkpoint. <sighs> okay. Um, there's only three things, but there's four blocks. So I think we have to... Oh, hold Y and restart again. I think we have to do this without opening the special section down there, if that makes sense. Like, without opening those two blue spots that just make it easier for us to succeed. But in the end, you know, I think there are worse ways to spend... Uh, 15 bucks and I understand that that doesn't necessarily come across as like the world's most endearing criticism of a game but at the same time it, it's it's been reasonably hard for me to articulate my thoughts on this you know given that it's a, a game that I actually like decently enough but I'm finding sort of hard to recommend at a price point that is maybe a little bit oh god oh god I'm, I'm caught in the cycle um, a price point that is maybe a little bit of a high ask but I certainly think that you know if you're into that kind of like trial and error uh, platformer style gameplay that is of course known in you know like Super Meat Boy, Cloudberry Kingdom and stuff like that. Are you telling me I did not break that laser? We're actually dead as heck then. Um, then I think you'd you'd like this and, and I don't feel bad recommending the game at all. Like if, you, if you're interested in picking it up I would recommend doing so. Um, I just think that it's easier to recommend within a sale as opposed to um, you know at, at the original price point here. So, that level was pretty cool. Uh, why don't we try something new? We'll, we'll try, like, the rush level back here. And there are five levels, or five worlds, I should say, here. I have no idea what do not enter means. I mean, it means don't enter, but I'm not going to go and enter it, because maybe that's some spoiler that they would rather players find out for themselves. Um, instead, let's come up here and do this rush level. I've never done this level, so... Uh, we'll see. Select the trial you want to rush. Beat these trials as fast as you can to earn stars. Oh, so there is like a speed rush, or a speed uh, run mode in the game, which is cool. Ooh, don't go this way. This is the tutorial level, so if we can't beat this with like at least a bronze, that's a little embarrassing. But in the end, yeah, I think I, I've, I've relatively, even if I haven't given a succinct sort of like, you know, 
byline that I could use for my... Why not just go through it, you know, if it's all about speed. Um, uh, I haven't given really a, a succinct byline of uh, how I feel that you can make incredibly easy to digest. But at the same... Oh, I'm an idiot. At the same time, I think I've sort of I've said my piece relatively clearly. I think it's a mixed experience that is, is largely pretty good uh, with a price point that is a little bit, you know, on the, on the higher side. Uh, but overall, if you're a fan of games that, you know, are easy to pick up, hard to master, if that makes sense, and if you appreciate the way the game kind of, you know, humiliates you and, and does so deliberately, and I don't think that's, you know, a negative thing necessarily either, but uh, if you're a fan of that style of, uh, of discourse, by all means, you know, I've had a good time with the game so far, and uh, I think you might as well. Where, oh my god, where are we time-wise here? We could do better than that. 111.72. That's good enough for one star? No, no, no. Restart trial. I'm not happy being 185th. I'm not saying we gotta be top one or anything like that. I'm just saying, like, you know, put me in the top... Top 100 at least here. Maybe we'll reveal a little bit about the level design. Like, if you just hold sprint, it actually feels maybe more elegant or something like that. I don't know. We're gonna get a little hurt here. That's okay, though. Make it much better time. Oh, this is going to be a new world record. I don't know, maybe being a little audacious here, yep! <laughs> I think, I still think we can do it though. Okay, we're good. Go fast. Just be cool, just be cool. Oh, now you idiot! Dude, this... I actually figured because it was the tutorial level, it was going to be much easier for us to knock this out. Apparently, I am an idiot. Um, but, 105, slightly better, 105.80 though. We moved up like 10 places. This is a little embarrassing. Um, I'm going to try one more, try to get that third star, and then that'll probably do it for the video. Um, it's Road to Valhalla. I don't really have anything uh, more to say than that, except for the fact that uh, I hope Workshop Support adds some... Uh, some cool levels if people are interested in enough enough in the game but I don't, oh, let's restart um, I do find that sometimes people are really eager to just be like hey it's got workshop support so don't worry about the fact that it has uh, not that many levels right now or the game's not that long because you know modders will fix it eventually but I find that that's you know it, it's like being like the game has online multiplayer so you'll never struggle to find somebody to play against and then you're like well there's only like 30 people online in the whole game right now and what I mean by that is not not that it's um, not an asset, but just that it's not guaranteed. It's like Quadrilateral Cowboy. People are like, hey, just wait for workshop support. By the way, Quadrilateral Cowboy, I like a lot. I think it's one of my favorite games of the year so far, but people are like, hey, don't worry about uh, the fact that there's only, you know, 10 pretty short missions. You know, workshop support will fix it. I'm like, well, I don't know if that's necessarily a guarantee, you know? You need... You're kind of relying on not just, um, you know, levels existing, but also, like, ideally good levels. Oh, why would you try to do things that way? Like, it's not enough that it's just, like, you know, extra fodder, I think. It's got to be a little bit more advantageous than that. You know, it's got to be, they've got to be well-designed levels, otherwise they're not adding much value at all. Oh, baby! We've done it. Okay, that one seemed way better. <laughs> We've finally done it. And again, this is kind of what I'm going for, is that in the in its best moments, I do think that you can get this um, almost, I mean, we're playing rush mode, so it's almost like pun not intended, but a little bit of a rush out of the game. It has that trials aspect of like trial and error. Uh, but overall, uh, Road to Valhalla is kind of a mixed bag. I think mechanically it's pretty fun. Uh, not necessarily, like, outrageously impressive in, in any particular area, and, it, and, you know, it's a game that we've seen done before, but a reasonably solid execution, price point may be a little high, uh, but your mileage may vary on that depending on your level of affluence and desire to play this, and your tolerance for games that are shorter as well. Um, but, uh, for my money, you could probably wait for a sale if you like what you, uh, see here, but, uh, definitely this is not a bad game, uh, just a game that is, uh, 
it, it feels like a really simple mechanic gussied up nicely from an aesthetic standpoint. And and actually, actually, Doctor Actually, actually, that's um enough to get me interested in a game like this. I, I do appreciate when games don't laboriously overload you with like, hey, here's a you know a ten page in game tutorial of all the arbitrary mechanics we invented. If it works well, great. But if it doesn't, you're kind of putting in a lot of upfront time. Uh, this one is just like your ball roll around. It's an easy. Uh, it's an easy sell from a, a tutorialized standpoint, and they do a reasonably good job with it. A little expensive. I don't know how many times I said that over the course of the video, though. For now, there will be a link in the video description below to pick up Road to Valhalla if you are interested. Um, if you are, you can go pick it up there. And of course, if you enjoyed the video, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.